Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. It's your girl Fanny Lungu back with another reaction video. If you're new to this channel, make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and of course, do not forget to subscribe. Like I said, my name is Fanny Lungu, and on this channel, we post reaction videos each and every day. So if there's something that you guys want us to react to, let us know by dropping the link in the comment section below, and we'll be more than glad to do it so a big shout out to the person that suggested this they suggested i react to the reasons why does gene enter your body gene series part four so without wasting time let's get into the video Now we come to talk about Jinn Possession. And Jinn Possession is different from magic. We're not talking about magic. We're going to talk about Jinn Possession. We're talking about a voluntary act by one of the Jinn. We're not talking about the Jinn being commissioned by somebody to attack someone. We're not talking about the Jinn being forced to attack somebody. We are talking about a Jinni voluntarily of his or her own accord attacking a person and the difference is that in magic it is not of their own accord in the sense that it's not something that the magician has commissioned them to do or has forced them to do or has um, or they've been compelled by in one way or another or they have agreed to do what the magician said we're talking about the jinn doing it absolutely of their own uh, free will and volition their decision that they make that i'm going to possess this person and there are many, many proofs of this. And again, one of the most common things that I hear, and I keep meaning to write an article on this, is people who say there's no evidence that the jinn possess people. And that all of this is mental illness and so on and so forth. Say to him, no problem. There's no, do you believe in the jinn? They say, yes, we believe in the jinn. Because you know the jinn are mentioned in the Quran, yes. And you believe that the jinn are a type of creation, yes. And you believe that the jinn are intelligent, yes. And you believe that the jinn uh, have had interaction with human beings and this interaction has led them both to transgression and tyranny, yes. Why don't you believe the jinn possess people? The answer will come back and there is no other answer. The only answer will come back is that my mind cannot comprehend it. There's no chance of any other answer. Just say the only thing they have after everything is, it doesn't make sense to me. And that's not an evidence in Islam. Rather, if we look at some of the evidence, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, those who devour riba will not stand on the day of resurrection, except like the standing of a person who is touched by the shaitan, possessed by the shaitan, leading him to insanity. And the word mess here is the word used for jinn possession. They are possessed by the shaitan, leading them into insanity. The Prophet ﷺ said the shaitan flows through the son of Adam as his blood flows. And in a number of ahadith, the Prophet ﷺ removed the jinn from the bodies of people. And he would come to a person and strike him on his chest or on his back and say, leave O enemy of Allah and I am the messenger of Allah. Tell me, what was he striking if the jinn doesn't possess a person? He will strike someone on his chest and say, leave or enemy of Allah and I am the messenger of Allah. Doesn't make any sense. But as for the jinn possessing people, this is something that is testified by the Quran, by the Sunnah, and by consensus of the Muslims, i.e. until probably modern psychiatry, Freud or whoever it was, there was no Muslim scholar who rejected this, except for the extreme philosophers and the Mu'tazila and some other extreme groups. There were no mainstream Muslim scholars who rejected it. Furthermore, it's not just the Quran and the Sunnah and the consensus of the Muslims, but the eyes and the ears and the senses, you see it every single day in a way that can't be explained by mental illness. Reasons why possession occurs. Now I'm talking why would the jinn possess somebody without being 
commanded or contracted to do so by a magician. I have uh, written down three, and there are lots, but I've written down three of the most common. The first is in order to further the aims of the shaitan. So for example, a person already has magic done to them. At this point, we've seen many cases where there are jinn that will join in and possess the person on top of the jinn that was sent by the magician. And they are simply there to help support and further the aims of the shaitan. So jinn possession that is there to further the aims of the shaitan. Secondly, if a person has harmed the jinn or their family, and again, we see this many, many times, not so much in these days, but you did see it a lot when people would uh, spend more time in the areas that are known to be inhabited by the jinn and they would go out you know, into the, the countryside and into the desert for long periods of time and often they would live there and sometimes they would do things that were un-Islamic that would lead them to harming the jinn. For example, they may harm some of their children or harm some of them by pouring boiling oil on them, pouring boiling water on them. People have been possessed by these things if they've afflicted the jinn. And I think there's an overwhelming body of evidence that the jinn can be harmed by some of the things that harm human beings, like boiling liquids and like uh, other things. And again, how this happens, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. And this can lead to a retaliation, an attack, uh, in retaliation and this can often be a Muslim jinn that does it. I mean, in the other words that it doesn't have to be a non-Muslim. If you're talking about furthering the aims of the shaitan, you're expecting this to be a non-Muslim jinn that is furthering the aims of the shaitan. You're not expecting a jinn who is a Muslim to be furthering the aims of the shaitan. I'm not saying it never happens but you wouldn't expect it. And likewise with when it comes to the issue of love, and this applies to both genders, that the jinn who attach themselves to others, there is no sort of guarantee that they would be uh, from the non-Muslims. They may just as well be from the Muslims who have you know, turned away from the path of Allah, who've gone far away, who are not practicing their Islam properly uh, and who um, are afflicted in this regard. So jinn, they fall in love with people. And this is extremely important for our sisters especially. So for example, you're leaving the house and you're not wearing the correct hijab, you're not properly covered, or you are wearing a lot of makeup and you have beautified yourself and you're leaving the home, then don't forget that there are other creations besides men. There are men who are going to look at you, but at the same time, a jinn may fall in love with you. And this is something very, very common. When might a person be vulnerable to jinn possession? A person perhaps might be at their most vulnerable to jinn possession at times when they forget Allah. And there are a number of evidences for this. The first is the statement of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, وَمَنْ يَعِشْ عَنْ ذِكْرِ الرَّحْمَانِ نُقَيِّضْ لَهُ شَيْطَانًا فَهُوَ لَهُ قَرِيمٌ Whoever turns away and lives without the remembrance of Allah. We assign for them a shaitan that will accompany them. So this tells us what? That when you're far away from the remembrance of Allah, you are vulnerable to being afflicted by the shaitan. There is another, perhaps even clearer evidence. And that is the statement of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ اتَّقَوْا إِذَا مَسَّهُمْ طَائِفٌ مِّنَ الشَّيْطَانِ تَذَكَّرُوا فَإِذَا هُمُ بْصِرُونَ those people who are obedient to Allah when they are afflicted by something from the shaitan, a touch or a whisper, they remember Allah and then they can see clearly. So the remembrance of Allah pushes away the shaitan and not remembering Allah draws the shaitan near to you. And this is true of any time when you forget Allah. But from experience, extreme emotion is a key here. This tends to be times when you completely forget Allah. When you completely forget Allah is when you undergo, when you have experienced extreme emotions. I'm not talking about you get angry, but I'm talking you get so angry that you lose your mind. You no longer know what it is that you're saying. This is a time when you have completely forgotten Allah and it's a time when you are vulnerable to being attacked from the shaitan. And indeed the Prophet ﷺ warned against this kind of anger uh, in the famous hadith, لا تغضب 
do not become angry. Even when a person experiences extreme joy, extreme sadness, to the point where they no longer can control their cell themselves and their bodies and what they're saying and what they're thinking, then this is a time when a person is particularly vulnerable. We also have an evidence from the Sunnah that a person is vulnerable in places that are particularly unclean or isolated. So you're in somewhere that's particularly isolated and deserted, or you end up in a new place, you drive into a new city, you climb out of your car. The evidence for this from the Sunnah, add to this the statement of the Prophet ﷺ that the wolf only eats from the lone sheep. This also gives you an indication that the shaitan, a person is vulnerable to the shaitan in cases where they are isolated. Prophet ﷺ speaking about the shaitan. That the shaitan afflicts the person who is alone in a way that he doesn't afflict the person who is with somebody. And there's no doubt if we add to this uh, the fact that magicians are known for uh, going out to isolated places to seek help from the jinn, then there's no doubt that this further emphasizes the concept that we have. Oh, my battery is low. I just wanted to say uh, there's that saying that goes an empty mind is the devil's workplace or something. Just always keep yourself busy. But then he said even when you're just too excited, you can still be possessed. Otherwise, I know when you're idle, you start thinking all sorts of things. You're more vulnerable to anything that I'm very sure of. Anything can attack you, be it a demon, be it jinn, be it whatever you want to call it, anything can attack you. Don't ever put yourself in such, such a vulnerable situation. We're going to experience sad times, high, high, happy times, but we should um, control these situations so as not to let them consume us. I think I always say this, never let a situation control you. Otherwise, this, this was a very, very good message. And thank you to the person that suggested this. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and of course, do not forget.